I'm Anna Maria Knapp, owner of Celebrations Wine Club. And I'm located here, actually, in the tasting room of beautiful Barasa Vineyards and Winery here in Napa Valley. The topic is uh, how to make bottle stoppers. When you reach for wine on a shelf, you're concerned about what's in the bottle. I'm gonna give you some information that will uh, switch your focus maybe to what's on top of the bottle as well. The first closure that we're all most familiar with and actually dates back to the 17th century when it was first mass produced to top glasses, glass bottles that uh, the English at that point had, uh, had invented a process for mass producing uh, bottles, mass producing glass bottles, and wine moved from where it had previously been stored into individual glass bottles. So the most important function of a closure, any closure, and certainly cork, is that it prevents the wine from being oxidized, turning sour. It prevents oxygen from ruining the wine. Uh, Corks are made from the bark of oak trees, actually, and most of these forests in the world are in Portugal, Spain, and North Africa. The other thing that cork does is it allows natural cork, it allows a wine to age. And the reason that it does is because it allows just a tiny, tiny trickle of air to penetrate the cork into the bottle. And that air, too much of course, ruins the wine, but a tiny bit of it over time allows all those changes that take place when a wine ages. Cork, however, has a dark side. And that dark side is that about 5% of corks are tainted. They're tainted with a mold that is actually natural on bark. And it's activated by chlorine. The industry has done a lot uh, in the last few years to prevent that from happening, but chlorine is in water and it still does happen at one point in the chain or another. So cork taint initially is almost not recognizable and winemakers get most upset with it at that point because you would just come to the conclusion that you didn't like the wine, might not ever buy the brand again. In its later stages, it's very pronounced. It's, it has a serious moldy, um, moldy smell and flavor. So literally, uh, that 5% failure rate is hard for at least some winemakers to swallow, and the race has been on to find other kinds of closures. This closure is aggregate cork. This happens to be for sparkling wine. Um, you can see sort of the little particles. They're glued together with some kind of food grade, uh, food grade glue, and they are compressed. They're completely biodegradable. Uh, they wouldn't last over time to, um, to age a wine. And like natural cork, they're not only biodegradable, but um, you know, cork forests uh, actually are uh, important for various reasons. Uh, they, they, protect, they protect species that would otherwise be extinct. And they, um, you know, that area would be paved over, you know, if it wasn't for its economic viability. The next cork that is common in the marketplace are the plastic corks. I don't have one here as an example, but they're perfectly obvious when you uncork a bottle. There's no mistaking what that substance is. The problem with those corks is that they don't protect the wine for more than two years and maybe even less. They are not biodegradable. So they top wines that you're gonna drink immediately, especially whites. This closure is picking up a lot of uh, users these days. The screw cap, this is the bottom part of it. And the screw cap, the problem with screw caps is, first of all, the great thing about them is that they're convenient. The problem with them is that they're airtight. So 
if the wine that goes under a screw cap is probably made a little bit differently than with cork that allows air to penetrate, uh, but still there can be sulfur taint because this cap is totally airtight. So these can also ultimately ruin a wine. They are not environmentally positive in any way. They're made from aluminum, which comes out of the ground, ends up in landfill. Uh, you can't recycle it. It is what it is. You'll probably love it if you're having a party and you have to open a lot of bottles. Servers like it because it's you know, very easy to just twist off the cap. This is an interesting closure. It's called the Zork. It originated in uh, Australia. You peel away this bottom part and you lift up the cork. It pops in case you like that sound that you get from natural cork. Um, this Zork, so-called, will actually preserve the wine for up to four years. Uh, it is completely recyclable, not biodegradable, of course. And then last, the glass top. It inserts into a bottle, it's covered with foil, and there's a little plastic, uh, you know, uh, washer around uh, the part that fits into the bottle that, you know, ties it in, and the foil does part of that job as well. This will not, you can't age a wine really uh, with a glass closure, uh, but it's, you know, it's totally biodegradable and recyclable, and it's a very attractive closure. It's now being used for expensive white wines, and actually this and this, the glass closure and the Zork, are both expensive, which is probably the reason that you don't see them all over, uh, one reason anyway, and they're as expensive as actually premium cork over here. So what ultimately uh, competes with wine, at least in some way, is going to be up to the technology in a few more years, actually. We'll just see how any of these uh, closures, other than cork, uh, how they develop and how they develop in terms of cost as well. So, next time you buy a bottle of wine, think about what's on top of the bottle. Mm -hmm.